good to see ya. I'm just kidding, I can't see ya. It's just me here, by myself, talking to a camera like a crazy person. <laughs> but anyway, uh, this fandom is full of so many crazy, amazing, talented, creative people. And sometimes these people put their talents into making fursuits, which just look even more crazy and amazing. And we are blessed to have a fandom that is just so beautiful with all these amazing works of art. But the people who make these amazing suits didn't get that way overnight. I know it's easy to look at a poorly made suit and be like, oh, lol, look at that suit. It looks like it was made with carpet and duct tape. Oh, it's going to give me nightmares. But we need to put ourselves in the shoes of both the fursuit wearer and the fursuit maker before we start making comments and assumptions like this. I don't mind you having a giggle with your friends privately. Not like I'd know otherwise or could stop you, but publicly suit shaming is not cool. Also a disclaimer, uh, every amateur suit you see used in this video, uh, even the thumbnail as well, I have permission to use. Uh, I made a post on a couple of social medias of people asking if they wanted to volunteer some suit photos for this video and heaps of people did and I want to thank you all so much. I couldn't use all the photos but I did look at all of them and I just want to say thank you so much for donating these photos to me. I believe that there is no such thing as a bad fursuit. Poorly made and amateur, yes, but never bad. That's why the title is in quotations there. But yes, there's no denying that there are biases in this fandom towards people who have nicer looking fursuits and fursuits from very popular makers. But unfortunately, I see the reverse happen a lot too. People want to be a part of this fursuiting hobby so bad that they quickly go out to their craft store and just buy whatever they can. They want to get their suit as soon as possible because they want to be a part of this super quick now. So they hastily make their suit or they'll find the cheapest maker they can find and rush order it and get their suit and they've got it and it's so amazing and they love it and they bring it out and then they're made fun of and harassed and bullied because their suit isn't the same as some of the nicer suits. I have seen people bullied out of this fandom because they had a suit that was deemed bad or cringy and that just makes me so, so sad. We are a lot better than this, come on, aren't we supposed to be, you know, the loving, accepting, furry fandom that just loves everyone? Like, if you go back, like, what, 10, 15 years, some of the suits then that were considered, like, top, amazing, high quality range would be, like, mid, low range nowadays. We are so lucky to have so many fursuit crafts in this fandom being able to bring us such amazing works of art. And we really shouldn't be making fun of people who have one that isn't just because it's not from mixed candy or something. We shouldn't really be making fun of them because of that. Fursuits are an extremely exciting possession to have and through the eyes of people who have the more amateur suits, they don't even see an amateur suit. They see their persona right there in the flesh. Their prized possession, there, right them. They can wear it and it's them. They just love and treasure it so much and then being told that something you love so much is bad or it's ugly, or it's cringy. That, that sucks. That sucks hardcore. Especially when it comes from your own fandom. When your own fandom is bashing you. That super hyper sucks. And then it's even more worse when the person receiving all this is also the maker of the suit. Everyone starts somewhere and they still take a lot of time and effort to make. And being put down for that really wants you to just give up suit making altogether and just leave the fandom because why would you stay when no one's going to encourage what you're doing and no one's going to like you? There's no point in subjecting yourself to that. Some aspiring makers don't even bother posting their beginning work because they're afraid of ending up on some kind of cringe page. Now, I know cringe pages are outside our fandom as well, but there are a lot that are still inside our fandom. And then when we still make fun of our newer suit makers, we kill our fandom's future. The next autumn fallings could be someone watching this video right now, but is just too afraid to even try because they've seen how some newer suits can get treated on the internet. But I hope I can offer you some encouragement right now. If you're thinking about starting to make fursuits, please, please do it. Please do it. For me, 
please. But if you're still scared that it's just not gonna be good or you're gonna end up on some cringe vlog somewhere, all I can say is research, 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 and practice, practice, practice. Uh, I've linked some amazing fursuit tutorials in the description below. Like, there's gonna be a lot there, videos, text ones, just everything. So please go have a look there because while it is good that you want to start making a suit now, if you do a little bit of research first, then it's going to be 10 times better than just winging it. If you want to post your photos online somewhere that you can still get some actual, you know, constructive criticism and help and encouragement and advice, uh, I would highly recommend the Fursuiters and Fursuit Makers Facebook page. This page has 11,000 members full of like full-on established fursuit makers that are ready to just lend a helping hand and give you some advice to kick off your fursuit making. There might be some brutally honest criticism, so uh, just be prepared for that, but they are saying it for your own good, so please don't take it too much to heart. Uh, any outright hate just gets blocked and banned, so don't worry about that. Another good thing to avoid drama is uh, while you're still starting out, uh, don't take any commissions from anyone that isn't otherwise your immediate friends and family because there are some furries out there that will be quite brutal and blow it way out of proportion when the slightest thing is wrong with their fursuit. And then the best way to learn is to just make them. You know, you gotta spend money to make money, so just get the absolute cheapest materials you can find just while you practice and then when you're feeling a bit more confident, uh, use some good materials and make some pre-made suits so that way you can just sell those and get some good money back and get some publicity and after a few of those, then open for public commissions. Obviously, you don't have to follow what I'm saying here, you know, I'm not a fursuit maker and I'm not your mum, so do what you want, I don't care. But I reckon that's what the safest way to go about becoming a fursuit maker is. Uh, if you're an established fursuit maker watching this video, I would love to know how you actually got to that point, so either shoot me an email or leave me a comment below, I would love to hear about it. If you've taken all the safest steps possible, but you still find your work on a cringe page, uh, don't be discouraged, alright, I know it sucks, but assholes are gonna be assholes. Don't let them influence your life. I've even seen my Adezu suit pop up on multiple of these cringe pages, and probably even more because I've asked people to stop showing me because I would rather write a 10,000 word essay on the fundamentals of watching some men dry than go into these pages and wasting my time. So, <laughs> don't take it personally if you end up on one of these pages, whether you're the maker or the owner. Don't take it personally, just, just keep on being awesome. Alright, fursuit buyers, I want to talk to you for a sec. Now, I know you want to take your character to a really popular maker that you know is going to make your character look absolutely amazing, but there are actually a lot of advantages of taking your character to a maker that is still getting on their feet. So, let's discuss the pros and cons of commissioning an amateur maker. So let's start with pros. Uh, for one, the suit can still look absolutely amazing, alright? When I ask people to send me in photos of their amateur suit work, uh, there are so many that I couldn't use because they just still looked so good. Like, even these people's like first and second suits look like someone who has been doing fursuit suit making for years. So, let me show you a few examples of those. Another pro is the price. Now, I don't like to look at fursuit makers based on price alone, but obviously amateur makers do have to have their prices more in the lower end because they're just starting and still getting on their feet. So, having a lower price fursuit is a bit of a nice bonus. You are also supporting our fandom's entire future, all right? We wouldn't have all these amazing, incredible makers to choose from if people like you didn't commission them in their early days. By commissioning a newer maker, you're helping them get more publicity, which gets them more commissions, which gets them more money, which gets them more and better fursuit making supplies, which makes them more amazing! And your fursuit will also be totally unique. When I see a fursuit that I can't recognize any particular maker's style in, I get super excited because that means there's a maker out there that I haven't heard of yet. You'll be turning so many heads with your brand new suit in a style that barely anyone has seen yet. Or maybe just my head. I don't know. Uh, I'll probably be stalking you all the way to the Headless Lounge to ask you about who made your suit. Alright, let's talk about the cons. Uh, the quality can be a bit of a wild card. It might look awesome, but there could still be some areas that need work. Uh, by rights, your maker of choice should have practiced enough so that the suit is at least wearable and comfortable, but mistakes can still happen. But this is also not exclusive to amateur makers. There are some big name makers that still make plenty of mistakes. Trust me, I know. But uh, amateur makers do tend to be a little bit more vulnerable to them. If you're really, really concerned, 
see if you can contact one of their previous customers and just ask them about how the quality of their suit is. And uh, if they don't have any previous customers, then well, yeah, there is a bit of a risk. But if you take that risk, I just wanna say from the bottom of my heart, thank you so, 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 so much because if people like you weren't their very first commissioners, we wouldn't have all these amazing makers, like I've said before, but the very first commissioners are the most important. So if you do this, thank you so much. Uh, another con is that this is scammer territory. Uh, people stealing photos of other fursuits online and then claiming it as their own and then taking commissions for them and then running off with the money. Uh, yeah, not good. It is uncommon and it is quite avoidable, but I have still seen it happen a handful of times myself. So always reverse image check of the photos they use and when you're paying by PayPal, always send as a goods and service. Never, ever, ever click the option to send the money by friends and family. That is red flag number one. If someone asked you to pay by friends and family, be like, nope, bye, I'm smarter than you. This is because when you send money through PayPal as friends and family, PayPal legally considers the money to be a gift. So if you need the money back, PayPal's like, you gave that money away. We can't give that back to you. No matter what the context is, you can't get that money back. It's gone, it was a gift, it's theirs. You're SOL, you're done. If you pay as a goods and service, if something goes south and you need the money back, you can dispute the payment and then try and get your money back. But that's really it for the cons. Like, if you like the maker's work, and you don't mind the small risk associated with it, then commissioning an amateur maker is a great thing for everyone. So in closing, let's be the warm, loving, welcoming fandom that we're supposed to be by supporting everyone, regardless of what their suit looks like or who made it. If someone is being singled out, let's be right there behind them, support them, so they don't feel like they don't belong here. Remember, everyone has to start somewhere, and for some people, they don't have any other option. So let's please support everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much again for everyone who submitted photos for me and I will see you in the next video. See ya!